Okay, uh, this is uh, McCulloch Titan 70, um, Italian made 70cc chainsaw, uh, made in late 80s, early 90s, um, very early 90s, I think production stopped in sort of 91, 92, right around there anyway. Um, 70cc, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it's solid, it's, it's not a light saw, but it's uh, it's not crazy heavy, sort of old school heavy. It's somewhere in feels to me like a kind of somewhere in the region of uh, a still 044 uh, Husky 272. Um, it's magnesium. It's either magnesium or aluminium, presumably magnesium uh, crankcase with plastic in in a modern style. Um, you got. Um, you got the, uh, nothing particularly interesting about the, the starter. Um, the st I mean, it's, um, you, you've got a decompressor here, which uh, I don't know if it's if it's sort of in designed to be self-returning. It, it whenever I come back to the saw, it's uh, it's in decompressed state. I don't know if that's an intentional thing or just because the sp spring is slightly worn. Um, as soon as the saw's running, it's obviously up. But then, as I say, I'll turn it off, come back to it, and find that it's. In again, so it may that may be the design feature. I don't know um, if it is, it's, it's kind of neat, I suppose, because it, it does require a bit. It's a uh, as, as people say, a high compression saw. Um, it does take some effort to pull over without the decompression in, decompressor in. Um, choke, which is just just governs the choke, doesn't have any effect at all on um, throttle, uh, set at half throttle. Uh, dead man's hand uh, handle uh, trigger in, and then and then as you, that's locked it at half throttle. And then if you so for starting, you pull it, lock it like that. It's a reasonable design. Again, it's it's all feels slightly overbuilt. So it's pretty difficult to snap any of this stuff off. I would think. Um, Okay, on this side you've got an uh, inboard, inboard clutch, uh, really nice, nice, very smooth chain brake. Smoothest really uh, I can remember encountering. Works really well. Uh, not so much that it works well, they all work well, but that, it's just that it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's almost a pleasure to use. It's just a really s solid, non-clunky design. Um, inboard clutch. Uh, I don't know if you can see here is the oil tank, which is a, um, it's a separate part, uh, which is sort of sandwiched in here some, somewhere, somehow, um, which, I don't know, I suppose it enables you to change the, the oil tank without having to change the crankcase or whatever if you hold it. I don't know what decision, I don't know why that decision was made. Then you can see the oil line, which just runs here and then back. To the oil pump, which sits behind here. Uh, oil works very well. So oil is strong. Um, but as as the as the source came from the factory, as far as I'm aware, anyway, assuming that most of this is original. Um, uh, the annoying selection of, um, of of hex bolts and Allen bolts and uh, flat, you know, s uh, slot head bolts. Um, I've changed most of the, the plastic over to Allen just for ease of uh, use. Um, but yeah, that, um, that was a strange design decision. I've, again, you can see I've changed these over to a uh, you know hex key. Um, the, the the mufflers are um, eight mil um, hex nuts. Um, it seems like a strange decision to have such a variety of tools required to strip the thing down but slowly I'm changing everything over so it's all um, hex key. I'll show you the um, the air filter. So I've changed these, oh, I think I've already said that, um, they were um, slot headed bolts as most of them are on this saw or, or were. Uh, definitely makes sense to change the bolts out there I think. Um, yeah, so that, that comes off here. Uh, it's your air filter housing or cover. Um, 
very substantial air filter. Um, you can still buy these new, um, which I'm going to shortly. Uh, this one's not in great condition, but um, so then the uh, the housing for the um, air filter uh, is if you undo the, the two bolts here and then two screws here, then this comes away. That the carburetor sits underneath there. Um, not really much to say about that. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a strong old saw leaning towards the heavy, I suppose. Um, sounds amazing. Um, there's no point starting it up on camera, really, because you won't get any with my phone camera. Phone camera microphone, you won't get any sense of the... Uh, the, the brilliant noise it makes, but um, if you ever have a chance to start one up, then do. Um, yeah, good, good, good fun, Old, oldish saw. So, a few around in pretty good condition. Um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Anyway, if anyone has any questions or anything, then do feel free to ask. Not that I'm any kind of uh, expert on this at all, this has come fairly recently to me, but um, since there's virtually nothing about these saws on YouTube, I thought maybe a guided tour would be of interest to somebody. Um, yeah, if you find one cheap, I would buy it. Um, it's a completely, you know, usable saw for, um, probably not for day-to-day -day professional use, but certainly for um, for, for big, big tim biggish timber at home, uh, you know, for firewood. Um, and it's just nice to use. It it's, uh, it sounds brilliant. It's is loud. That's the one thing though. It is loud, so really loud, but loud and brilliant. Um, yeah, loads of talk. Um, fast enough. Um, I think it's really hard to find um, details as regards uh, um, Max Factory settings um, RPM wise, but uh, the best I've come up with is somewhere around sort of. Uh, 11,000, maybe, 11, I don't know, I mean, I'm guessing, I'm, there's bits and bobs on the internet, but nothing conclusive, and uh, I'm trying to track down a manual, so hopefully there'll be something in that, but um, yeah, anyway, I hope that was of interest to somebody, bye-bye.